A lot of people know that the biggest passenger aircraft in the world is the Airbus A380. This monster has been born for 15 years. The width is 80 meters long. It has four giant engines that move it. If they lay out the seats very normally and the first class is not crazy, it could fit up to 853 passengers. 853, that's an insane number. The first flight that took place was on October 25th, 2007 by the Singapore Airlines. Airbus spent a lot of time to make this airplane. They did a lot of research and they were able to actually design and create this airplane. But it's very unfortunate that this airplane has to say goodbye. In the last 15 years when this plane has been around, 239 has been made for different types of airlines. Emirates Airline is the biggest customer for this airplane. When the airplane was released, they ordered 162, but then they realized they don't need that much. So they lowered their orders and made it 123 units. When Emirates canceled their order, Airbus got very worried and it made them kind of realize that the investment they committed to this project is not paying off. And that is why they say at the end of 2021, the last A380 is being built. The Boeing 747, which is one of the biggest planes as well, it was operating from the end of the 1960s till last month, and eventually they actually recently canceled it. Since we want to know why it failed, we have to get back to the year 2000. It was at that time that Airbus started this project. Airbus predicted that the world needs 1,250 airplanes that fits more than 400 passengers. In those years, Airbus was in contact with Boeing. Boeing suggests to Airbus is that let's create a better and bigger airplane to the 747 and basically take over the market with the best big airplane we can offer. But Airbus declined the offer and said, I have my own design. They had the A380 in mind, and they thought it was going to be 100% successful, and it could easily defeat the 747. It was at that moment that Airbus started to create their own airplane, and created a monster. And whenever they announced it, it surprised everybody. But after a few years, they realized they made a mistake. Why did they make a mistake? Their mistakes was divided in three categories. First mistake is planning with the airplane. It's so big, it can't be used everywhere. And that is why you can't use it a lot. The second reason is the advice from the airliner. They say in today's market, we don't really need an airplane this giant anymore because they're forced to send it empty and receive it empty. And the third reason is the cost of operation. Just like we said, the width of the A380 is 80 meters long. 747 is a monster itself, but the width is 68 and a half meters. And just because it's a little bit bigger than the Boeing 747, it causes a lot of airports to not service the A380. Because most of the airports around the world were created with the biggest aircraft in mind, and that was the 747. 
When Airbus did their research and they came up with the numbers, it seems like they got it all wrong because they're being defeated. A lot of experts said they should have worked with Boeing, but they were really committed to their own design. Another problem with the design is the exit and entryways. Because it's two complete stories, and to get in and get out, it needs a two-story entry in there. Like for JFK Airport in New York, for the A380 to be able to operate there, they spent $175 million. Like for example, in US and Canada airports, which is very big, there's only 16 airports that accept this giant aircraft. Airbus knew that not every airport is gonna accept it, but they said they're gonna want it so bad that they will renovate their airport to accept this beautiful aircraft. But it seems like they didn't realize the 747 is still alive and well. An aircraft that has been around for a very long time, it's very safe, it saves more on fuel, and cost of operate is very low, it makes a lot of airline companies to prefer this over the A380. If you remember when there's an international flight in a country, it usually used to land in one city because it was an international flight. For example, a country like Iran would go to Tehran, or India, it would go to New Delhi. But countries expanded this, and a lot of cities would accept international flight. And this kind of made the idea of the A380 even worse. An A380 could easily lift off from Dubai and go to New York. In that case, it's worth it because in that long flight, they got very good ticket sales and it lifts off once and lands once. But if countries have a lot of international flights here and there, it's not worth it anymore. This A380, with all the components it has, it can't fly all year round. In the winter, it gets very slow, and the profits are only during the summer in the northern hemisphere of planet Earth, and that's only at long distance flights. Emirates, that has the most A380, says that each hour it takes to operate the A380 is $21,838. But since 747 is even older and it doesn't really show off like the A380, it costs $13,600 per hour to operate. It is true that the A380 fits 34% more people in there, but it's 60% more expensive. And when you compare it, it's kind of like losing money. The companies that ordered a lot of these and they kind of regretted that decision, don't know what to do with all of them. The more they fly, the more money they lose. Airliners like Emirates, Etihad, Qatar, or Singapore, which own the most A380s around the world, they each paid $465 million for the plane. Nowadays, the most profitable airplane that can go anywhere, the first one is the Boeing 777. The second one is the Boeing 787. And the third one is the Airbus A350. A380s won't be produced anymore, but the ones that are here are gonna operate. When this airplane hit the market, it surprised everybody. A giant airplane with two stories and it surprised everybody and this kind of caused companies to get in a trap. Like for example Emirates ordering 162 of them. When this thing is filled up and it wants to take off, it could weigh up to 575 tons and all that weight has to get lifted off and fly away like a bird.
A lot of airports around the world, just like JFK we mentioned, wanted to make their airports compatible with this giant aircraft. But since it didn't fly often, a lot of airports didn't do it. Depending on how the business and first class is set up, this aircraft could fit up to 535 people all the way to 853 people. The longest airplane ride, which is from Dubai to Auckland, which takes more than 17 hours, and same with Dallas, Texas to Sydney, which takes 16 hours and 55 minutes, they both happen with this airplane. And in journeys this long, it's very profitable. Nowadays, Emirates sends seven A380s a day from Dubai to London. But just like we said, it's only profitable in the summer months because the airplane is filled all the way and it's filled all the way when it returns. A lot of people believe that these huge companies never make mistakes and they're very calculated in their problem solving. Airbus spent years researching about an aircraft like this, but they made a mistake. What do you guys think? Please comment.